Hi, we're Sal and Andy and Mike, but you can call us Sam. We're studying ferrofluids. Ferrofluid is a magnetic liquid that is made of magnetite, a surfactant, and a carrier liquid. So what is magnetite? Magnetite is Fe3O4. The iron is what makes the liquid magnetic. Ferrofluid is made of this magnetite, but if it's all just stuck together, then it's a solid. So we surround it with long-chain fatty acids, like oleic acid. At the end of these chains is nonpolar group, which keeps the magnetite separate from the carrier liquid, like kerosene. And because of the mixture, we now have a magnetic liquid. The first group to create ferrofluids was NASA. But what did they need it for? Coating the moon? Oh no, sir. On Earth, we have gravity. And that pulls liquids down. But when there is no gravity, NASA needs something else, like magnetic forces to move their rocket fuel. While ferrofluid was originally developed for use on board the space shuttle, its uses are by no means limited to moving fuel. This substance is commonly used in liquid seals and bearings and hard drives, variable suspension systems in high-end sports cars, and paint for stealth aircraft to reflect electromagnetic waves. Another common application for ferrofluid is in cooling systems for high-end performance loudspeakers. Here, we see a typical speaker taken apart into its components. The most important of these are the cone, the voice coil, and the permanent magnet. From the side, we see how these various components fit together. The cone is the large circular part that we can see, and the part that moves back and forth to create the pressure waves that we perceive as sound. A large permanent magnet is located behind the speaker. The voice coil, attached to the cone, also creates a varying magnetic field when current passes through it. This magnetic field interacts with that of the permanent magnet to create attractive and repulsive forces that drive the cone at the proper frequencies to produce the sound. In large loudspeakers, however, the voice coil can become very hot in the presence of large currents, and without adequate cooling, the speaker can melt or catch fire. By surrounding the voice coil with ferrofluid, the heat is moved away from the voice coil to a heat sink or dissipated over a larger area. But why do we use ferrofluid? How does its magnetic susceptibility make it transfer heat better than any ordinary liquid? The most important experiment that Sam performed was a test of heat flux of the ferrofluid in a simulated loudspeaker, with and without a magnetic field. The setup consisted of a test tube filled with ferrofluid, a heat source consisting of two power resistors mounted to an aluminum block, and two thermocouples hooked to an oscilloscope. The control experiment did not use a magnet. In this setup, convection occurs naturally. Hot liquid becomes less dense and rises, where it then cools and falls down again to be reheated. Organization based on density, however, only occurs in the presence of a gravitational field. With the addition of a permanent magnet to the bottom of the test tube, a second convective force is added. According to Curie's law, the magnetization of the ferrofluid decreases proportionally with temperature. In other words, hotter fluid is less magnetized, so the coolest fluid sinks to the magnet, which in a speaker is located near the heat source. Our test showed that even over a relatively large distance, heat flux can be increased by as much as 60%. As we've seen, ferrofluid's unique properties allow it to be used in countless applications, including many which are still under development. Future military garments containing magnetic fluid will be able to harden into instant armor with the flip of a switch, and will just as easily become flexible again when turned off. Doctors may eventually be able to destroy tumors by injecting them with ferrofluid and then exciting it with a magnetic field. NASA has also experimented with moving ferrofluid in a closed loop with electromagnets as an attitude control system. Finally, ferrofluid may pave the way for a whole new field of smart liquids, which can morph between a solid and a liquid and behave in ways we may not yet have imagined. Thank you for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have.